How to Read Guitar Music, Introduction and Part A, Lesson 1. This course is designed for somebody who can already play the guitar, so you need to have at least a little basic knowledge. For example, to be able to play a few chords and to be able to read tablature. The longer you've been playing the guitar, the easier you'll find this course, but you'll still find it very useful. Before we get started then, there's a question I need to answer that I get asked all the time when I post videos on this subject, and that is, do I really need to learn to read guitar music? And the answer to this is, yes, you definitely need to learn to read guitar music. And, no, you definitely don't need to learn to read guitar music. Well, I can imagine a lot of you is sitting in front of your screens right now thinking, how can both those statements be true? Let me explain. Music is made up of two main elements. One is the note or the pitch, and the second is the rhythm. Now, we all need to know how to read the rhythm, especially in the case of a tune we don't know. However, the note or the pitch can easily be replaced with tab. And there's another complication. And the best way for me to explain this is to show you an example. Here we have the treble clef stave. The stave is made up of five lines and four spaces. And each line and space represents a note, or to be more clear, a pitch. So, if I was to put a note in the top space of the stave, that would be an E. Or to relate it to a guitar, that would be the top E string or the thinnest string on the guitar. Now, that seems straightforward enough, doesn't it? However, the top E string, that pitch, can appear six places on a 24 fret guitar. Now, I'll demonstrate that now. Obviously, as I've just stated, it appears as the open top E string, but then it appears as the fifth fret on the B string, the ninth fret on the G string, the 14th fret on the D string, the 19th fret on the A string, and the 24th fret on the bottom E string. I'll show you that now on a guitar. And here it is again. Unfortunately, the fret markings aren't very clear on this guitar, but it's the only guitar I've got available at the moment that's got 24 frets and 6 strings. However, you don't need to learn this or memorise it. This was just a demonstration of the problems that can arise when you're reading music for the guitar. Hopefully you can see the problem now. That E on the stave can mean six different places on your guitar. Now you can supplement the music so it tells you which position on the guitar you're supposed to play. However, this just complicates reading the music and makes it slower and more difficult to do. Therefore, it makes far more sense to read what frets you're supposed to be playing from tablature. Unfortunately though, you can't read the rhythm from the tablature, and this means you have to learn to read rhythms. And even if you don't think you need it now, if you're serious about playing the guitar, you will do eventually. And because of this, I've broken the course down into two parts, part A and part B. Part A will be purely about the rhythms, and Part B will be purely about the notes. And if I'm completely honest, you really need to look at Part A and get your head around that, but Part B, I'll leave that to your discretion, because some people might like to read music, and some people might have something in mind. However, generally, you don't really need it. OK, let's get started with Part A, Lesson 1. The beginning of the stave. At the beginning of the stave we have the treble clef, and we'll be using the treble clef throughout this course. 
There are several clefs, and for each clef the lines and the spaces mean something completely different. So stick with the treble clef for the time being, otherwise you'll just get confused. The next element is the key signature. And this is made up of a number of sharps, or flats, or none. And this tells us what scale the tune is based around, and how we should play the notes. So, for example, if there was an F sharp at the beginning of the score here, every single F in the tune should be played as F sharp, unless it states otherwise. And the tune is in the key of G major. The ebook to accompany this course is available at www.ebooksforguitar.com and it's completely free. And in there, we've got a list of all the key signatures and how many sharps and flats are in them. For this particular lesson, any exercises we're doing will be in the key of C, which means they've got no sharps and flats. And this is just for simplicity's sake. The next element in the stave then is the time signature. And the time signature consists of two numbers, one on top of the other. And the only one we're concerned with for the moment is the top number. And this tune is in 4-4 four, four time, and the top number is a 4, so that's how many beats we count per bar. We'll look at the second number, or the bottom number, as we go through the course, and it will become clear then what it means. The next element you'll see on the score is the bar lines. And we'll see these at regular intervals throughout the music. And these help us measure out the rhythm. And each bar has a set measure of time. In this case, because we were talking about 4-4 four, four time, each bar will be measured 1, 2, 3, 4, end of bar. However, when you're learning the music or playing the music, there is no stop, no pause, it has to be continuous. So it'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. When you're learning rhythms, something that's really important, and everyone out there should download one or buy one or get one from somewhere, and that's a metronome. There's loads and loads of free metronome apps on the internet, on mobile phones, Apple and Android. There's no excuse. Without metronome, there's no guarantee you'll get the rhythm right. Just in case you find it useful, at the end of this video, I'll record some metronome beats for you to practice with. Let's take a look at our first note shape. And this is the semi-brief. And we can recognise it because it's hollow and it doesn't have a tail. And it represents four beats. The semi-brief rest is a small block that hangs off the line above the centre line. This is the D line and this represents four beats of silence. To demonstrate a semi-brief, I'll play four E minor chords with a metronome at 90 beats per minute. Before I start, there'll be two bars with just the metronome in case you want to play along. I'll be playing all the exercises and all the demonstrations with a metronome beat so that you can play along if you want to. And the metronome beat here, you'll hear there's a slightly different beat for the first beat of the bar to help you keep time. So it goes. I realise that for some students you might find these beats too slow or patronising. However, bear with it, as we go through the course it gets harder and it is important you learn to stick with the beat no matter what the speed. Exercise 1 And we're going to play this exercise using chords. And the names of the chords you can see written above the score. In the music you'll notice the semi-breves but you might also notice I've laid them out onto the notes which represent the chords. Now this is simplified 
because in the real music you'd have every note within the chord. However, just so you get used to seeing them on the correct lines, I've placed each semibrieve on the appropriate line. So for example, when you see an E minor, the semibrieve will be on the E line. Or when you see an A, the semibrieve will be on the A space. Before attempting any of these exercises, it would be worth you checking through the chords first and make sure you don't need to revise any. And if you find you do, I've put a link down below in the description to a chord chart. Here's exercise 1 being played at 90 beats per minute. There's a two bar introduction in case you want to play along. Here's that exercise again, and if you can, play along. And remember, when you see a rest, the guitar should be silent. If you're more advanced or feel more adventurous, I've put the metronome beats at 90, 100 and 110 at the end of this video, so you might want to try it at 110. But remember, whether you're playing at 90 or 110 beats per minute, you should try to make the chord last for as long as you can. A semi-breathe is a semi-breathe, so in the perfect world the chord should last for the full four beats. However, you do need to allow yourself some time to change chords, but that needs to be as small a time as you possibly can. Just in case you are feeling brave, here's exercise 1 at 110 beats per minute. Exercise 2. If you managed exercise 1 okay, then you should manage exercise 2 the same, as it's very much the same cause, and it's still using the semi-breathe, so the rhythm should be quite easy for you to follow. Here it is at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction so you can play along if you want to. Bye. 
Here it is again, so you can try and play along with it if you can. And if you found that really easy, here it is at 110 beats per minute with the usual two bar intro. Exercise 3 Exercise 3 is something a little different. You'll notice we've still got the notes with the semi-briefs, but this time we've got the tablature underneath and we've got no chords. So what we want to do for this exercise is try to play the tablature with the correct rhythm. Just try the notes first before you try to bring it together with a metronome. But here it is with the metronome anyway at 90 beats per minute and with the usual two bars intro in case you want to play along. Here it is again, in case you want to practice playing along with it. For this exercise, if you want to try it with a faster metronome beat, just pause the video here and try it with a metronome and then come back. Exercise 4 Exercise 4 is very similar to exercise 3, but a little harder. You might actually recognise it as being the C major scale. However, continue to try and play it with the rhythm and with the metronome. Here it is at 90 beats per minute with a two bar intro so you can play along. And here it is again, in case you want to practice playing along. Thank you. 
as with the previous exercise, if you want to try this exercise more quickly, you could pause the video here and go and try it with a metronome at a faster rate. And then you can return to the video when you're ready to move on to the next exercise. Exercise 5 In this exercise, we'll be playing chords again. However, you'll notice not only are the names of the chords above the score, but the chords are reflected in the tablature. And this is more how it'll look in commercial tablature. We're still leaving the music as simplified. However, this is only appropriate at this stage. If there's any of the chords you're not familiar with, you might want to look at the chord chart first and practice those. And if you've never played an F, you might need to see my video on how to play the F major chord, because it's quite a difficult chord to play. Now, here's exercise 5 at 90 beats per minute with a two bar intro in case you want to play along. And here it is again at 90 beats per minute so you can practice playing along. Just in case you wanted to try something a little more challenging at the end of this lesson, here's exercise 5 again, but at 110 beats per minute with the usual 2 bar intro, so you can try playing along with that. Because I'm going to end this video with a series of metronome beats, I'll do my sign off now. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. There is a good chance you're watching this video after I've uploaded the whole course. And if that's the case, it's worth you going to my YouTube channel and looking at the playlists because I'll organise the uh, courses into playlists there. Otherwise, you'll find all the courses laid out with the ebooks and backings and everything necessary at ebooksforguitar.com. And thank you very much for watching. And here come the metronome beats. <laughs>